Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul, and it is my deep and high honor to be with you today. I believe it's May 3rd, and this is 2017, and today is day two of Soul Secrets for Self-Healing. Uh, on day one, which actually happened Monday, today is Wednesday, <clears throat> we covered some very, uh, very deep and very important aspects, and this is part of a series. Yesterday I had some technical difficulties, so I, I appreciate your patience, and I'm very grateful that you joined us here today. And the soul secrets for self-healing are endless, actually. I could probably do just this series for two months, no problem, because the amount of secrets that I could expound upon to do each uh, each live stream could in and of itself be uh, you know just an entire show as I say that out loud maybe I'll do that maybe each day I'll take something a uh, secret a soul secret and just uh, deliver it over the course of an hour show you the power of it <coughs> but we'll see how it goes on Monday <coughs> Uh, I have to actually tap into the flow because the information that I was sharing was not planned information. Um, it, uh, I have an idea of where I'm headed, but I don't necessarily know um, the specific specificities of the information that's going to be shared. But what actually came out was very, very important. And if you missed it, I highly recommend you go back and watch it. It's listed above this video. Uh, it says archives if you want to see the previous ones. And it set the foundation for today and the ones that follow. And the, uh, the nutshell version of it is this. <clears throat> we are all here in the present moment. But this present moment was the result of our past thoughts, words, and actions. And our future will be a result of our present thought, words, and actions. So in order to have control of our future, in order to incur self-healing, we need to take uh, responsibility for what has brought us to the point where we're at, where we're not enjoying whatever aspect of our life is out of balance, which occurred from things behind us. And so all of Monday's uh, wisdom and teachings was to set the foundation on the basic principles of responsibility for what has preceded the present moments that we may be enjoying or maybe not be enjoying. <clears throat> there are a great deal of um, uh, things that happen in our life physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, in relationship, and more that basically have no, um, they have no foundation in our present belief system we put them outside of us as if they happened to us. And so on Monday's teaching, it was about recognizing all those things that, quote, happened to us, happened around us, and moved from a place of irresponsibility to a place of responsibility. So I recommend that you go back and watch that one as it will set an exceptional foundation for the rest of what we're doing. <clears throat> and so let's see. Let me uh, further chat a little bit before, as we allow more people to gather and grow with us. I just came off, as probably about five or ten people watching today, of the live uh, event with Master Shaw. And this is the, um, I guess he finished the second evening. Uh, it's daytime here, but it was evening over there. Uh, and um, it's on understanding the ten da. One of the beautiful things about Master Shah is his heart of service. And he is um, moving towards not being available. And whenever you have a spiritual master that is offering sacred wisdom, which is all I'm regurgitating, I'm simply repeating the sacred wisdom that he has brought to humanity. <clears throat> whenever a master who has, over the last 20 years, brought to us 20 books and literally saved a, a millions of lives, 
uh, that cannot continue forever. That kind of a being has a, has a very high purpose and cause. And in order to achieve that high purpose and cause, he needs to take time off from all of the individuals that he's serving so that he can serve a much bigger whole. In order to do that, he has to become a much higher light being than he already is. So he will be taking four months off starting at the end of this month. Nobody is able to contact him, connect with him, nothing. He will just disappear, basically. Uh, and then next year, it'll be nine out of 12 months, and nobody will see him. And so he's indicated that the reason this is occurring is because humanity is about to ready to go through some major shifts, uh, moving towards the light, and they need as many light warriors, so to speak, as possible, which is why for the last 15 years, he has been empowering people to, to receive um, abilities that assist others to self-heal, um, <clears throat> abilities that, that um, we would name, for example, of a master teacher, and in the past we would say that we would heal people, but that's not something we could say now. We just say that we assist people to self-heal. But the reason he's brought well over 10,000 people uh, these abilities to help other people to self-heal is because he indicates that as we move into this transition time, things could become a little more difficult. Um, the, uh, the conditions on Earth could become a little more daunting. And um, it's important to have um, light beings on Earth. So during this retreat, this last couple of days, he has brought uh, extraordinary blessings to assist people to maintain the highest health and wellness possible. We are beyond blessed. So I'm going to stop and acknowledge all those that are tuning in right now, and then I will go into day two. So aloha and welcome <coughs> to Dana Knapp. Welcome Robin. Welcome Elizabeth. Welcome Susan. Um, aloha Ali. Welcome Kristen Rojas. Welcome uh, Susan Birchmore. Aloha Linda Jansen and Archana. Joining us early in the morning over there from India. Welcome. Welcome Kate and Nicole. Uh, welcome also to Kristen Strachan, Johnny Mambodi, good to see you. Welcome Angie Taylor. Susan says, uh, Master Paul, my granddaughter is very poorly. Can you give me uh, something I can do to help her, please? Five-year-old worried about her. We're going to reveal that today, and you'll be able to use it instantly to assist her. <coughs> uh, I will silently ask you to go to help her. Please think of your granddaughter right now, Susan. So the blessing is already coming to her, um, and I will share what, what it is I, I ask to go her, to her because it is something that's available for all humanity, and you'll have that available to you soon. So aloha, uh, Maria Magdalena. Welcome, Christine Mock. Aloha. Welcome, Marianne Bennett. Uh, excuse me, Benetti. Benetti. Uh, welcome, Tammy Lee. Welcome, welcome to Amanda. <coughs> Beatty. Welcome to Cheryl Healing Ray and Candy Cornet. So thank you all for joining. I very much appreciate you taking time out of your day to be with me here today. I do come uh, Monday through Thursday to serve everyone that I can. I know many people cannot come in person. The value of coming in person is you get personal attention. Uh, you may be chosen as a demonstration person. Uh, I can answer your questions sometimes depending on the subject matter. There's a great value in being in person. But I also very much appreciate you sharing this with your friends and family. Uh, I now have quite a few friends that show up on my Facebook page that, that show up here because of you and your service and sharing. Uh, the message that I was delivering for their soul and their soul journey um, connected with, with them. And it was because of you. So I'm very grateful. So thank you. Thank you all very much for that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and ask the beings of light to come. We're going to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. And we'll move straight into the second day of this wisdom. So we start by placing our hands in a hand mudra position, which is much like a prayer position, uh, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center, where the right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Let us close our eyes. Let us fully connect. To all layers of the divine, all layers of the Tao, all layers 
of Creator. All beings of light serving the plan of the light side, masters and ascendant masters, lamas, gurus, saints, sifus, Buddhas, bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, all beings of light, dear the soul of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you all, honor you all, respect you all, and we ask most humbly, most sincerely for your presence at this time. Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. We love you. We honor you. respect you. We ask for your presence at this time. We invite all souls to chant with us to offer this unconditional service. I saw three or four uh, names that are new folks that are joining us today. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I invite you to make a request. We will chant for two rounds a, a source song. It is a healing mantra. And it could uh, start to bring you some uh, beautiful benefits. Of course, this entire hour will bring you great benefits. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more after the mantra. Everybody else, please close your eyes. Join me in this service. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xin her ling, wo ai chun ren lei, wang ling rong her mu shir shang. Song I ping on her say, Song I ping on her say. I love my heart and soul, I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, 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 Lula. Oh, I wash in her ling. Oh, I turn red lay. Wang ling rong her musher song. Song I ping on her say. Song I ping on her say. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> Excuse me. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you all of those new folks that are joining us today. Thank you for having the eyebrow go up with curiosity and wonder what this is all about. You just heard me uh, do what's called a mantra, a chanting mantra called Love, Peace, and Harmony. And it is a soul song. It is exceedingly healing. Uh, hard to imagine that a song could actually do the level of healing that I'm speaking of. But, you know, as my teacher would say, if you want to know if a pear is sweet, then taste it. I'm going to offer a wisdom and teachings today as to why something like this song or other things like it, like this book that I'm about to reveal today, can have such extraordinary healing power. Um, and it has to do with an, uh, uh, a deeper understanding of the nature of soul, the nature of, of Creator and whatnot, and our interrelationship 
to that, uh, and how a power can be transmitted to objects, people, things, books, songs. And so as you start to comprehend that on a deeper level, because I'm sure you already have some comprehension of it, you may be able to move yourself from a place of um, questioning and wonderment to a place of confidence, because we'll actually use it today as an actual example. We will use uh, an aspect of uh, healing that has been transmitted to something that you can't see, you can't touch. Uh, you might be able to feel it if you, if you have energetic abilities. Uh, but you will immediately be able to notice uh, a measurable benefit. And so this is all uh, an aspect of the larger picture. This soul song, uh, Kristen, thank you Kristen, has posted the nature of it in the, the chat boxes. Um, it is a worldwide song. It's currently translated into 50 languages. It carries with it an extraordinary frequency of love and peace and harmony, which literally transforms all things that are, we're not enjoying. Um, again, if you want to know if a pear is sweet, you have to taste it. So I would suggest following the links to download it and learning a little bit more about it. Uh, I'm not going to go into that teaching today. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, thank you for taking the time to be with me. Today is day two, how we can go about self-healing using soul secrets. Now, I have to spend five or ten minutes offering a baseline of soul so that you have an understanding that we can move forward with. And this is not something that I invented. It's something that has been known for a while, but of itself has actually been kept secret. Over the course of many, many years, way longer than our history acknowledges, there has been uh, our beloved Mother Earth has been around roughly four billion years, and that's you know, anyone that's exceedingly educated will validate that. And in that time, that means that uh, a, a great deal of life has been here. And it didn't just start with caveman before us. Uh, human beings have been around for a long, long time. We've been on this earth many, many times. And things like um, Noah's Ark and, and, you know, the earth flood and all that has happened more than once. Those that are on the spiritual journey may have heard of things like Atlantis and Lemuria and all these names that I don't really know much about, but they represent ages of the human being. So if this is challenging to you, by no means am I going down the, the road to irritate you or to bring up challenging perspectives. I'm offering information that in the much bigger picture could serve you if your mind remains open. So I encourage you to maintain an open mind and see if it, if it is something that you can work with based on your current understanding. And if not, my further encouragement is to set it aside without judgment and say, well, at this point, I don't really grasp it or uh, feel that it works with me, but I'm going to set it aside and maybe at some point in time I'll receive information that has this piece of information make more sense. That way of approaching things has always worked well for me. I heard many things 20 years ago that today I completely concur with it because I have far greater knowledge than I had 20 years ago. But at that time when I heard it, I thought it was just crazy stuff. Um, but instead of judging it against what my own perspectives, which would have been very ego-oriented, I said, you know, maybe I'm just not wise enough at this point, so instead of judging it, I'm going to set it aside and see if it makes more sense down the road. Now, some things I have thrown out, but other things have made a lot of sense as I became more aware, more educated. <coughs> so... Um, and I'm, I'm hearing that I need to speak a little bit more about me and where this wisdom comes from before I share it. So my name is, is Paul Fletcher. I don't necessarily like putting the name Master Paul in front of my name. It's just something that our teacher says it's important to do, not for ego. First of all, it challenges us so we don't have ego. But secondly, it, 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 he says it's relative so that people at least listen. He says because... His purpose in coming to humanity is to serve human beings, to awaken them, to teach them secrets that have been long held for a long time by the great masters that are hiding in the mountains. And he said, so he's here to help reveal those, but people need to move through and past their egos in order to open up to them. And um, he says, so if you put your name, the name master in front of your name, he said, it'll weed people out right away. Those who are on a journey looking, they will at least pay attention. Those whose ego is too big, they will say, oh, I'm not going to learn from a guy named Master. 
So it made sense, and I heard it. I'm like, all right, I'll go ahead and put it in front of my name. I don't really care about it, but that's why. Secondly, uh, I've been on the spiritual journey since about the age of 18. Literally moved into a house, picked up a book called The Treatise on White Magic, and it was intriguing, you know, 18 years old. Ooh, white magic. Um, but upon reading it, it was very, very heady, very intellectual, written in the 20s, so it had these and thous and very weird, you know, English. But it spoke about some things about the nature of the universe. It wasn't about magic at all. It was about the nature of the universe because there was a whole series of books. And uh, extraordinary. started waking me up. I went through a theosophical school, which is a four-year school on all the different religions so I can understand the love that ran through all of them. I've, I've trained under several masters, and more recently, true masters, and more recently, uh, about nine and a half years ago, I met this teacher, Master Shah. Uh, Master Shah, for those that are new, <coughs> takes no claim or credit for the about a million healings that he has done, takes no claim or credit for uh, the 20 books, that 11 of which are New York Times bestsellers, he gives all the credit to the source, to the creator, and he teaches us as his teachers to bow down uh, and, and take no credit for anything that we offer as well. I think that's a pretty good teacher myself. So the wisdom I'm about to share with you comes from that base of understanding. You want to know more, you'll have to do the homework on your own, drsha.com. Uh, like I said, 20 books. You'll be able to find more as we go. You can always continue to come back and watch the live streams. They will serve you well over the course of time and if this intrigues you today above my video is a list of all the archives I just covered the seven chakras uh, last week so there's always good stuff each and every day okay so now I set a foundation for this teaching this wisdom and there will be of course blessings that are offered <coughs> excuse me a minute I ate just before this so sometimes when I eat it brings up more phlegm so Aloha Michelle Lee Lawler, Aloha, Aloha Nebedita, uh, Aloha Lisa Prado, Aloha Anne Marie Stewart, welcome to Michael Copran, Aloha Amanda Beatty, <coughs> welcome to Jennifer Caress Smith, welcome to, um, let's see, Cindy, good to see you here, Cindy, and I think I covered everybody, if I haven't mentioned your name, please forgive me. soul. These are called soul secrets. A soul is a golden light being. Everyone has their own expression of it. This is what uh, my teacher has expressed it at. He goes on to teach that everyone and everything has a soul. Now, the first time I heard that, I'm like, everything? Really? Like a rock? Like a chair? I don't think so. It was one of those things I pushed aside until I had more information. <clears throat> he then went on to teach that the reason everything has a soul is because everything has the consciousness, the heart, everything has the energy and matter of the original creator in it, since the original creator made everything. The original creator is in every speck of energy and matter that made up that rock. Therefore, everything has a soul. Okay, now that makes a lot of sense. I can work with that. And he says, for those with their spiritual third eye wide open, they can actually see the soul of different things. They can see the soul of that chair. They can see the soul of the rock, the soul of the tree, the soul of the bird, the soul of the human being. It uh, just takes a wide open spiritual eye. He then goes on to explain another soul secret. He says, not only does everyone and everything have a soul, but there is a purpose for being here on this earth. Everything has a purpose. Every soul has a purpose. That perked my ears. I'd already been searching about 20 years with a variety of masters and a long line of, of studying. Studied everything you can imagine, and it still wasn't quite wetting my tongue the way I wanted it to. And then, and the first place I read this was by was one of his books, one of the New York Times best-selling books. <clears throat> I think it was called Power of Soul. And it said, the purpose of life, the purpose of a soul's journey is to serve. So, wow, I mean, my heart lit up, my, my brain lit up, I was vibrating, I was like, holy moly, purpose of life is to serve. Fortunately, I had done enough practices where serving, I understood that serving wasn't just, you know, 
uh, adopting a kid and helping him out. That is a form of service, but there's a much bigger picture that I've come to understand. <coughs> and so these soul secrets have a very high level of importance to how to self-heal. The next soul secret that Master Shah brought to us, and when I say to us, it wasn't to a select group of people. His role, his mission in coming to earth uh, is the same role of any great being who has served before. Any great being who has served before, they do it out of an unconditionalness. They do it um, not for themselves, but to save as many people as possible in the form of saving their soul journey. <clears throat> and he, he brought with him the wisdom that, uh, that a soul lives forever, that this life experience that we get so stuck in is temporary. And we have problems, all of us, but he goes on to explain the source of those problems are rooted in the soul and its many, many lifetimes of journey. Now, for many of you, you've heard this before. Um, for many of you, you're new. So I apologize for those that have heard it before. Maybe you get deeper uh, shards of wisdom out of it. Because I'm leading to how you can do self-healing. So there are several major important pieces that have to be deeply comprehended, not topically comprehended. They have to be grasped with your whole heart and soul so that when you truly get it, all of the problems in your life finally have an answer. That's the kind of grasp that you need on these few pieces of soul secrets that will be shared here. And they're going to sound like you've heard them before, but truly, if you grasp it, your life can change. The first one is that a soul lives forever. And your soul is the carrier of all of your lifetimes of experiences. And those lifetimes of experiences have not always been laced with the beautiful soul that you are today, the good person that you are today, the, the person whose heart that keeps getting hurt uh, that you are today, the person that didn't do anything wrong but had a very unpleasant set of parenting. The kind of person you are today is a very good person for the most part. There's no way you'd be watching this if you weren't. Okay? You wouldn't be on the soul journey searching for answers if you weren't already a good person. That does not mean we haven't got our butt kicked by making mistakes in previous times that we cannot remember now. Okay? I don't know why the rules are the way they are, but when we come in, there is a veil, and that veil inhibits us from knowing clearly what we have done before, what mistakes we have made, and what we are to experience this time around so that we can clear up those debts and do better. Remember, the purpose of life is to what? To serve. So if we have problems with our health, if we have problems with our finances, if we have constant relationship problems, can't seem to find the right soul, uh, no matter what the label is of the problem that just radiates through your life and you can't seem to get above it, no matter what that problem is, there is a great value in the problem because in the problem is the opportunity to recognize your purpose for being here. I'll repeat that. In the problem is the opportunity. In the healing issue is the opportunity to recognize your purpose for being here and how to solve it. So we're layering the soul wisdom now so that you can start to comprehend how you can self-heal. On Monday, we talked about the nature of our power as a soul, that everything from behind us, including past lives and this life from behind us, <coughs> have, have, have co-created the exact condition that's in front of us today. All of the wonderful things that are happening, all of the not-so-wonderful things that are happening. We have to take 100% responsibility for those things. And Monday's teaching was about self-love, self-forgiveness, taking responsibility and giving ourselves a break so that we don't create more shit in front of us from, um, from focusing on all the unpleasant stuff. Now, I'm using some very straightforward words that maybe, quote, a master shouldn't say, like the shit behind us and the shit in front of us. But I'm a very real person. I deal with life the way it is. Maybe I get karma for saying that word. 
So be it. Maybe I'll help more people as a result, and it'll wash away the karma. Doing the best I can. So as we uh, start to move into a place of responsibility, and we start to recognize the nature of our soul, its existence, its purpose, and, and why we are here, why we have so much crud in our life and how to clear it, we can actually move a lot of it through by higher layers of awareness and responsibility. <clears throat> the Buddha has stated many times and requoted many times that life is suffering. Well, that doesn't sound very exciting. Who wants to suffer through life? That kind of sucks. Why does he state that? Because it's all about perspective. Do you think the Buddha felt life was suffering once he was enlightened? You think he was just like, well, I'm enlightened, but life is still suffering. No, no. Jesus, once, once Jesus made enlightenment, didn't say, well, life sucks, but I'm doing good. He, they reached a point of awareness that the things that were troublesome to you and me were no longer troublesome. How did they get there from where you and I are at? How did they get there? By applying the soul secrets that some of which will be shared through this series. Today, one of the keys is the subject of forgiveness. Now, I stated about five minutes ago, may sound very simple, unless you grasp that on the deepest heartfelt soul-based level you can comprehend, your life will not get a lot easier. I just tell you the way it is, guys. It's very, very straightforward, and very, very simple. There is a reason for everything good and everything bad. The root cause of every success and every failure in every aspect of life is karma. That is a one-sentence secret quoted directly from Master Shaw. It is called a soul secret. I will repeat. The root cause of every success and every failure in every aspect of your life is karma. Very simple. And karma is not always bad. Karma can be very good. Karma often is very good. Maybe you have a sore back instead of paralysis. That's good karma, guys. Okay? Um, maybe you have an excellent relationship with a loving spouse, but you just can't rub two nickels together. Well, that means you have good relationship karma. Maybe not so good financial karma. So, there's always both sides of the coin. Some of us are just getting our butt kicked but from every angle you can imagine okay I've got some news for you you'll be happy to hear it on some levels um, if you're here on the planet at this time your soul <laughs> not you not you by your first name whether it's Cindy Janice Paul James Jim John Patrick whatever your name is you are not here because you, the personality, chose it. You're here at this time because your soul chose to be here at this time. Your soul knew that you would have all of these not so pleasant experiences, some of the good ones too, but it chose to be here anyway at this very special time on earth. Why? Because the soul is always growing. When you're up in heaven hanging out, having a beer with your other angel friends, you're not growing, okay? It might be smooth up there, but you're not growing. You only grow your soul and its journey in adversity. Now, at least half of you are treading water. At least half of you are just trying to keep your head above water. The stress levels are high, all kinds of stuff. It doesn't have to be that way. Remember, your soul brought you in at this time for a reason. That reason is to clear the blockages. Now, here's a second layer of that. This particular time is a whole lot harder than many of the other lifetimes. And it will be a whole lot harder than the future. This lifetime is one of the hardest anybody's ever been through. Okay, I can tell you that very clearly, one of the hardest any soul is going through. It is also the highest possibility for the highest soul growth that you will ever have 
if you wake up fast enough. Why? Because adversity brings growth. What is adversity? Adversity is when your negative karma whacks you in the face and you don't do anything about it because you don't have the skill set, the tools, the knowledge, and the understanding how to resolve it so that you don't get whacked in the face twice. That's adversity. But when you wake up and you figure out and you grab the tools and you work with the tools instead of whining and complaining on Facebook every day, then you are moving forward on your soul journey, which means that your future will be a whole lot better. And when you go back up to heaven, you'll go from a beer to high quality wine and champagne. You like that joke? The purpose of being here is to serve serve our own soul in its journey and serve other souls. When I say serve our own soul, I don't mean being selfish at the human level. I mean being selfish to awaken our soul in its journey, doing what it takes, including overcoming the hardships. This time is very difficult for the vast majority of us because there is great, 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 great shift happening on Earth. There is great darkness. There is great light. There is both on a very high level occurring. The possibility of war is all around us. Disease all around us. Corruption is very, very uh, blatant everywhere. There's so much BS all over the news. There is no such thing as good news anywhere. We're just bombarded with negativity. Our, our children are our, our spoon-fed violence. There is so much unpleasantness, darkness, but there is massive amounts of light, far more than the darkness. I tell you, there's far more light than the darkness, a lot more. But that's also why it's like climbing up uh, an oil slicked hill in this lifetime, because we're in a transition time where the darkness is being, uh, uh, um, sh the light is being so shined on it that it's being exposed. You are everything I just spoke about. You're aware of. You're aware of all of the political corruption. Where you're aware of all of these things. You'd have to be oblivious not to know about them. And so, uh, the light is what's shining on them to make them aware, and it's slowly dissolving them and pushing them out. But it creates a great deal of hardship on us because when you have the sheer amount of negativity that is happening in this world, it puts a great deal of pressure on us on our soul journey. On our, on our mindsets. You know how difficult it is to maintain any form of positivity with the sheer negativity that comes at us from every TV station you turn on, every radio station. Uh, you flip on Facebook, tons of negativity. Okay, Lots of positivity, thank goodness, but there's a lot of, of negativity after a lot of people complaining. Complaining, guys, is negativity. Okay, Just figure it out. So the more we separate ourselves from all of those things, that are not supporting our soul journey, such as all things negative, such as our own negative thoughts, our own negative mindsets, our own negative beliefs, the more we separate from those kinds of things, consciously and purposely, like unplugging the TV, not getting a lost in, in some negative story, okay, the more the chance of us maintaining our soul's journey on a positive track. Life doesn't have to be suffering when we make conscious choices. The souls that are currently uh, leading the vast majority of, I'll call it the sheep in, in the world, the sheep are those that are not awakened. They're the ones that if somebody says it's negative, they go, okay, it's negative. That, that control group is losing their control rapidly. Each moment you awaken and do things for your soul journey, like forgiveness, like serving others, like turning off the TV, each time you do these things, you are building more light, more momentum, and you're separating yourself from this thing called suffering. It's about self-responsibility. <clears throat> so back to forgiveness. Why is it so important? Well, the unpleasant experiences that you're having on this day, be it the inability to maintain healthy relationships, the uh, spouse that's cheated on you but you can't leave them for whatever reason, the, um, the intolerance at work, 
<clears throat> the health conditions that, that are you know, unbearable, whatever it might be, we all have our own version of it, that didn't happen to you. Nobody caused it upon you. It is your stuff. It is part of your uh, many, many lifetimes of choices that were not made from the person you are today. You're a much better and good person today. Doesn't mean you've always been that wonderful in the past. So when we really, 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 really have a grip on that, we can start the process of moving from life is suffering to life is getting better and better and better. Because in this pivotal time that we're in, it seems like one thing good happens and we just start getting our breath and then we get whacked again. How many people give me a thumbs up on that? Probably going to see quite a few. You're not alone. Why? because of the pivotal time on Mother Earth. The light is moving forward. <clears throat> but what does light do? It removes darkness. Not just for all of the bad people that are creating this crap in the world, for us too. We have darkness, guys. I have darkness, you have darkness, everybody has some darkness. If we didn't, we would not be here. Okay? We wouldn't be here. If we had no darkness, we'd be hanging out with Buddha, we'd be hanging out with Jesus. We wouldn't be here. And so we have some darkness. And so the light causes us to remove it too. It brings it up one after the other because of the very special time that we're in. It is your greatest possible time to self-heal. There is no time like it in all time, like now. And one of the fastest ways to accomplish it is through the comprehension of a good and depthful forgiveness. Now, I'm going to spend some time on this because if you can get the deeper aspects of it, you can truly have some major, major uh, shifts in the areas of your life. <clears throat> the biggest mistake people make with forgiveness or what's called a forgiveness practice is taking it personally. We take everything so personally. The spouse that left us, the person that killed someone we know. We take it from a very, very, this is the only life, and what I see through this little bitty hole right there is the 100% truth. There is nothing else. If I can't see it in my little bitty hole, it must not be true. We have to widen that view so wide that we see how to forgive, why to forgive, and what do I forgive. And in order to widen that hole, it requires you to widen your perspective. Okay? Very difficult from this perspective to forgive somebody that really, really hurts us because we're the victim. We were the one that were hurt by something that somebody else did. Now, before I go into this in the depth, I want to state one simple thing. <clears throat> Your soul journey is not the same soul journey as your child, as your mother, as your co-worker. It is not the same soul journey as your best friend. It's not the same soul journey as your husband. Your soul journey is unique. You do not go from lifetime to lifetime with the same husband and the same wife in the same role time after time after time after time. It doesn't happen like that. Each time you come back, you have a different set of parents, children, spouses, best friends, brothers, sisters. Some of them cross over each other. Some of them reconnect in different ways. Some of them you don't see again for four, five, six, seven lifetimes. Why am I telling you this? So you widen the view. So you start to see that those that are around you that you have great caring for and those that are around you that have caused significant pain to you, right? Because that's what they live for is to, to cause pain to you, right? We're the victim. They're the victimizer. That's got to be the case. But that's looking at it through this perspective. You have to widen your view something happens to us or someone we love, widen your view. 
It's not your soul journey. If it happens to you, it is your soul journey. If it happens to somebody else, it is not your soul journey. It is theirs. So this wisdom applies to them. Just as it applies to you, you pick up the wisdom, you plop it over in their world, and you look at what happened to them from this wisdom. And you start getting some aha moments. You start being able to detach from the significant pain or suffering that you might be going through. Okay? So, forgiveness. How do we discover what to do forgiveness for and why should we do forgiveness? Because this, this root, this key, will unwind whatever unpleasantness you're going through faster than anything you can imagine. It is the fastest way to unwind your stuff on a self-healing basis. You may have heard that before. Maybe you have trouble grasping it. Maybe you're only going to get 10% and you got to sit with it for a while. Okay. But work with me on this. Why? Because we are all souls from the original soul. One soul, now we're 7 billion plus. Well, it doesn't stop with Earth. There's souls in all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. <laughs> Lots more life outside of Earth. <clears throat> but in terms of just the 7 billion souls that are here, we are all very, very connected, guys. And so that ex-husband that raked you over the coals, blah, 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 blah. You could write a book about it. Are you the victim? Is he the victimizer? Is this the first time it happened? Did it happen before that you can't remember? Remember, you come into this world, you only have your ego, your personality, you only have your memories of how you were the victim, of how life is beating you up, about how everything is blah, 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 bad for me. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying I don't have empathy or sympathy for your conditions. I got my crud I got to deal with too. But I deal with it using these soul secret techniques. And my crud has gotten a lot less and the light has gotten a lot more because I'm consistent with these secrets and I practice them on a daily basis. If you do the same, your life will get better too. <clears throat> it starts by widening the view. If you are looking outside of you, blaming anything outside of you, if you are blaming yourself for that matter, putting yourself down, why did I do that? You know, All of that self-critical stuff, all of this is not serving you. It's not moving you forward on your light journey. So I want to stick with the subject of what do we ask forgiveness for? So I'll just make up three examples. Uh, Ex-husband or wife that, that, that really rolls us, you know, just rakes us over the coals. And ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, same, same thing. Okay, that's one example. Another example, loss of a loved one. Another example, um, somebody, a coworker, that just makes our life miserable, maybe is impacting us from getting raises or causes massive amounts of stress, can't sleep. Okay, we use these three different examples. They're all examples where they're impacting our life negatively. Okay, and you can plug in this wisdom to any example, it doesn't matter, but it's good to have something representative like that. Okay, coworker, we'll call it a boss, um, always looking down on us. We, no matter what we do, it's never enough. Maybe they gossip about us, and whenever we go to get a raise, they always say something negative and hold us down. Okay, what do we ask forgiveness for? They're the ones that's doing this. Da, 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 da. What did I possibly do? This is what you're looking through when you answer that way. You have to go like this. Okay? This can't be accidental. I know I have a soul. I know my soul lives forever. I know I've been around more than once. And if I'm having this experience, I need to take responsibility for whatever part of it that I am responsible for. Now, this person could just be a class A jerk. But maybe, maybe I am having this experience because I have brought this exact class A jerk experience upon others. That's what you do forgiveness practice for. Very simple. Dear all souls, in this and all lifetimes, if I or my ancestors have brought any form of harm or suffering to you, specifically if I have held you down, gossiped about you, not allowed you to move up in the ranks, looked over your shoulder, belittled you, 
any of those things, it's very easy to figure out what you do forgiveness for. Just write down all those things that you hate. And then you do forgiveness for it. And you put yourself in the opposite shoes. You have to put yourself mentally, emotionally in the opposite shoes. Because you already know how it feels to be on the victimized side. It sucks. You have all the emotion that goes with that. Now imagine that you were uh, the one giving it and somebody else was where you are currently at on the receiving side. Maybe it was your boss on the receiving side at some point in time or maybe it was other people. Doesn't matter. Just because you can't remember doesn't make it not true. Forgiveness has the effect, if it's, if it's honest and, and respectful and honorable and deep, it literally dissolves the debris. You don't believe it? If you want to know if a pear is sweet, taste it. If you want to know if it works, do it. It's very simple. But don't do it once. You have to do it consistently. Do it for 30 days, every day. Have your alarm go off before you go to work. Okay, I'm going to do an authentic forgiveness practice with this boss that I've been calling a jerk and all the other souls that I may have done this with. You also offer forgiveness to the boss. What do you mean offer forgiveness? Okay, that's your ego response again. That's the fish eye again. Offer forgiveness. Because maybe, they don't know this, but maybe you need to offer forgiveness because one of you is definitely wrong. And if you offer and ask for forgiveness, you bring nullification of the karma that brought you this suffering in your life. And you can now move forward. What will happen, especially if you do it for 30 days, I can literally almost guarantee it. If you do something like that from an authentic place for 30 days, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that something will not shift. That person will get moved to another department. You will get moved to another department. You will get that raise you've been waiting for. Something will definitely shift. I have witnessed it way too many times. Example number two, loss of a loved one. When we lose a loved one, our heart is so connected. It's so difficult to let go. If we lose a loved one as a result of something traumatic, something at the hands of another, a drunk driver, a, a, a violent loss, we have so much anger and rage, just rage, because someone we deeply care about was yanked away from us and we could do nothing about it. Our rage stems from our helplessness and our inability to take out that rage on the person that took that person away from us. Of course there's all the other, all the other missing of the future and everything that we had planned. That's in and of itself. <clears throat> but there's a place where the rage stems from. It's all human based from this perspective. So from the bigger perspective, this is not easy to swallow. I get it. I want you to just kind of open up to it. <clears throat> that soul that has left, that you care deeply about, they have a soul journey. They haven't always been your son, your husband, your wife, your daughter, your best friend. They have been other things in other conditions and they haven't always been the beautiful soul you know them to be. Just like you haven't always been the beautiful soul that you currently are. They may have done something very unpleasant. Just like you may have done something very unpleasant like talking down to people, holding back their jobs, not giving them money. I, I know for a fact, have killed before. Not in this lifetime. I'm a good soul. Now I learned my lessons. But without a doubt, I have taken lives. I have ordered lives to be taken. I'm not proud of it, but I'm also not that personality that made those choices then, just as I am not this personality now. I'm a soul having a physical experience, and each physical experience I'm trying to do better. You are a soul having a physical experience trying to make each one a little bit better than the previous time. You are not the soul in the past that maybe ordered people's lives to be taken or have taken people's lives. The person that you love that was taken from you is not uh, the person that maybe in the past had ordered people's lives to be taken. They're not that person. Now, 
but there's a possibility that at some point they were. We cannot control their soul journey. They cannot control our soul journey. And this wider perspective allows us to work with forgiveness for a much bigger, bigger window. It's like, uh, it's like your, uh, your, your, your windscreen on your car has been covered with this mud and you're driving, trying to drive forward and you got this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem and you do some deep forgiveness around whatever your problems are and the windshield wiper goes and it takes off a layer of the mud. You can start to see a little clearer. You know the forgiveness practice? Wow, you can actually start to see a little bit of the road. So you hit the water button because you do a really deep, depthful forgiveness practice and the water comes on the screen and now you can actually see pockets of the road very clearly. And you keep adding more water, which is like more depth of forgiveness practice. And pretty soon, your road is much clearer, you're driving straight, and you get to where you need to go with far less pain and suffering. The forgiveness practice has that kind of power. Very, 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 very important to recognize the nature of our soul and its journey. <clears throat> this is not a one-time game, guys. I cannot tell you how many of the billions of humanity were so much in this fisheye of our life, we just can't seem to get out of it because we just focus, focus, focus on that problem that we're in. Watch Monday's or listen to Monday's live stream. It talks to you about how to disassociate from this focus that we're in now. This is the second layer. Once we become conscious of what we're in, we can start, start to unwind the crud, <clears throat> start to clean the windshield <clears throat> Excuse me. that's been creating so much blockage. <clears throat> okay, I have to teach longer than I intended because I haven't got to the third example. Third example, relationship. The spouse rolls us over the gutter, spits us out the back end, backs up the car, does it again, and for one more measure, rolls back over us one more time. Right? Feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? <clears throat> How do we forgive an SOB that does those kinds of things to us, right? I didn't say that, by the way. I said SOB. You're the one that thought it, okay? I just said the letters SOB. Um, How do we forgive somebody that does those kinds of things to us? You apply the same wisdom under those conditions. You list all the different ways that this spouse has dejected you, um, disrespected you, uh, uh, spoke bad about you, gossiped about you, stole your money, stole your house, broke your heart, blah, blah, blah. You write all 30 things down, okay? Do your forgiveness on those 30 things. Switch the roles. How would it feel? If you were the one being like them, you already know how it feels. Can you be sympathetic, empathetic for any souls in all lifetimes, and you've lived anywhere between 100 and 1,000 lifetimes, can you be empathetic and sympathetic for others having been on the same experience that you just went through? And can you imagine that you, at some point in time that you can't think of now, were possibly the giver of those unpleasantries? You know how much they must have suffered. It must have sucked real bad for them because it sucked bad for you. <clears throat> Offer forgiveness. Offer forgiveness to that SOB <clears throat> because they know not what they do. They could be acting out on the karma. Ask for forgiveness for this and all the times <clears throat> that you have done these things to all souls, including their soul in a previous time, Okay, including their soul in a previous time, and you do it consistently for 30 days or more, you will find that when you think or see their picture, the fire will be dramatically released. The angst will be dramatically released. The stress, the, the irritation, the ability to find a much better spouse, one that doesn't roll you over the gutter, will be dramatically enhanced. You will set yourself up for a far superior relationship when you learn the lessons. I have spent 25 minutes giving concrete examples of the nature, power, and significance 
<clears throat> and the necessity of a true, authentic forgiveness, what it is, why we need to do it, how you discern what you ask for forgiveness for, and then how to do it. I have PDFs of the um, forgiveness practice. And if anybody wants to, to Facebook message me, just say, please send me the PDFs of the forgiveness practice. I have one for self-forgiveness, one for offering forgiveness, one for asking for forgiveness. Okay, it's a good um, pattern to follow. You want to stop the suffering in your life? You want to self-heal? You have cancer? You have a sore knee? You have a sore back that never goes away? You have a, 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 a teeth pain? You have uh, constant migraines? The answer is the same. At some point in time, the good person you are today, which was not such a pleasant person at some point in the past, caused those kinds of conditions upon others. You apply the same wisdom. This is one of the soul secrets for self-healing. One of them. Okay? I'm going to save this, this special book for tomorrow. Give you another soul secret. Make you come back for more good food. Okay. Because we're running out of time, I'm just going to offer you a blessing. I'm sure that you'll be happy about that instead of doing a, a, a practice. <clears throat> but we are going to do a forgiveness practice. You're going to do it for your request. So pick one area of your life. If you're new, I suggest you picking something that is measurable so that you know the value of a blessing. <clears throat> when I offer a blessing, you want to ask for something that you can prove it by. Because one of the great features of Master Shah is he is a true master who carries true and extraordinary power. And I have been blessed to have received many transmissions. So when I offer a blessing, it is not a small thing. Um, I tell you this because that's how I make my living, by doing soul readings, personal consultations to help people through their structures. Um, so if you, if you need you know, personalized support, three sessions, five sessions, where you get individual, one-on-one, -on -one, personalized support, guidance to move from where you're at to where you want to be, blessings like what you're going to offer now, but much longer and much deeper, check with me. I can do that. Make your request, not to me, not writing it in here, make it to heaven, because the other one's doing the work anyway. <clears throat> if, you have, if you're asking, you want proof, I would suggest you ask for something that's measurable, physical. Give it a number, whatever your imbalance is, sore shoulder, do this, find out where it's most pain, oh, it's most painful here, whatever, okay, back. Bend over. When is it most painful? Okay. This blessing. Let me set the timer. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to use one of my higher healer transmissions. So this won't be a, a lower level one. So I'm going to offer it for three minutes. Miracles can happen in one minute. It happens all the time. Ten more seconds to complete your request. Only one thing. Do not ask for two or three things. Apologize now if you've asked for two or three things. Only ask for one. You ask for two or three, you get nothing. I'm turning on my treasure. Give me a minute. This also goes for all those that are listening on podcast after the fact. This blessing will go to you as well. Uh, after this blessing, if you want additional blessings or you're interested in personal consultations, you can call me at 808-469-6199. For those that are listening, you can, um, you can uh, just record it and go backwards and listen. Uh, Kristen, if you wouldn't mind typing that in the chat box, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Blessing for three minutes. Begin. 
Pausing this, we're going to do a forgiveness practice, and I'll continue for the next two minutes, ten seconds. <clears throat> Please repeat after me. Dear all souls, and this and all lifetimes, I love you all. I deeply and sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, apologize if I, my loved ones, or my ancestors have brought harm or suffering to you, especially for the condition of, and state whatever you're asking a blessing for, if it's sore back, please forgive me for causing you sore backs. Like that, okay? I most humbly, deeply, and sincerely apologize. I have suffered greatly from this condition, and I would not wish this upon anybody. I know that I am suffering because at some point in time I may have caused this upon others. And if I have caused this suffering upon you from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely, sincerely, sincerely apologize. Please forgive me. Please accept the virtue being offered from this service of Master Paul and release me of this blockage. I will not make the same mistakes again. I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness for any harm that you may have brought to me for this condition. For I recognize now that I might have earned it and you were simply the deliverer of it. I release you of any spiritual debt that you have to me. I ask for your forgiveness. I offer you mine. Continue to receive. Blessing continue. I love you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Please forgive me, I forgive you, I forgive you, please forgive me, let us live together in love, peace and harmony. Lu la la li, he la he la la, yo he ya yo ya, he ya ya he ya yo, ya he ya he ya yo ya he ya he ya yo. Lu la la li la lu. La hey ya you hey ya ya hey ya you please forgive me I forgive you please forgive me I sincerely apologize. I deeply regret all the harm I have done. I love you, I love you. I love you. 
Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Healing treasure, please return. Ha. Count the spoutons, count the spoutons, count the spoutons. Thank you to all the beings of light that came to offer this service. So, please share. Uh, if you did, choose something that's measurable. Check. Get up, walk around, move around, stretch. Check. What was your pain before? What is it now? What was your lack of flexibility before? What is it now? Some things won't be measurable right away. Some people maybe ask for you know, blessings in their finances, something like that. Obviously, it's not immediately measurable, but the blessings always work because they release virtue. That's how the blessings work. That's why uh, forgiveness works, because it's a release of virtue to offset the spiritual debt. That's why the blessings that I offer work. It's a release of large amounts of virtue that can offset debt and create instant results sometimes, depending on the nature of the debt, the depth of the debt, and whatnot. So in the personal consultations, if that has any interest to you, you can receive significant uh, a benefit, especially when you choose three or five peace sessions, because you're able to layer up each time uh, and receive blessings each time. And the combination of the releasing of the spiritual debt and the shifting of your mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, uh, they, they definitely create results. So I'm happy to serve you if that's of interest to you. So please share. <clears throat> and uh, Susan, you asked for your granddaughter. You call her soul. Um, uh, she probably already received the blessing. I, I, I sent her a blessing an hour ago, so it's been working on her for an hour. <clears throat> but... Um, you call her soul, and you do the forgiveness practice with her soul. You can teach other souls how to do that, and that will help her a lot as well. <clears throat> okay, so Tammy Lee didn't see anything change. Good. That means you do need to do more forgiveness, Tammy. Uh, you're very welcome, CJ. Angie says, wow, that was so special. Thank you. Emotional release, tears, and felt her heart fill up with gratitude. Many thank yous. Uh, CBD is countless bow downs. So I know that today's topic for some of you was information you heard before. I hope that the depth of it and the practical application of it is valuable for you, that you actually were able to grasp some of the ways to do it. Most of us have five areas of our life that we would like to see change in, relationship, finance, health, uh, work, and um, uh, oftentimes it's uh, uh, something related to business, which is not always finance. Um, these separate categories can have forgiveness practice for each. So take a look at uh, the bulk of where your blockages were. <clears throat> and figure out next what are all the things that you have anger about, all the things that you're blaming the other person for. They did this to me, 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 this to me. I hate it because of this, 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 and this. You know, I feel upset about my finances because, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. That's what you do your forgiveness practice for. Okay? Uh, Efrosini says uh, the inflammation feels like it's decreased in her throat. Um, it felt like an eight when you started, and now it feels more like a three. Thank you. Thank you, Heaven. Thank you, Master Shah. Thank you to the Healing Treasure. Kayla asks, is there a frequency to listen to when doing the forgiveness practice? Um, based on the question, I can't quite grasp what you're asking, Kayla. But what I would say is, scroll back up where Kristen has posted the link to the Love, Peace, Harmony uh, song. It carries one of the highest frequencies on the planet. And by playing it 24-7 in your various environments, and especially by chanting it, it carries a very high frequency. So if you have that playing while you're doing a forgiveness practice, 
it will dramatically enhance the uh, benefit of your services. Okay? And Cheryl says, a lot of release of tears and feeling lighter, and much more release of her blockages. Wonderful. Okay, thank you all so very much for coming. Thank you all so very much for, um, let me see, it went opposite. Second April senior, it felt like a or a one feels not so good and ten feels best before I felt like a three. Thank you. Oh, huh. interesting. So what that means, Aprosini, especially if a blessing is offered or, uh, and it becomes more, 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 it's kind of like a, a blister before it pops. So go back in, do more forgiveness, watch this recording, listen to the blessing again, the three-minute blessing again, uh, it'll subside. It's always, uh, if, it, if it gets worse before it gets better, it just means it's coming up to the surface to clear. Okay. So tomorrow, we're going to go into day three of self-healing how you can learn more soul secrets. Uh, if you missed day one, make sure you go back. If you're new and you enjoy this, hit the subscribe button, either on my Facebook page or at the end of this video. And I look forward to serving you very soon. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for telling other people about this. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All souls respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody.